Hi, I'm Susie Larson. Thank you for listening to Susie Larson Live. Faith Radio podcasts are only possible because of your support. So thanks for giving, and thanks for sharing with a friend. It's only just a matter of- You're listening to an encore presentation of Susie Larson Live. Welcome to Suzy Larson Live. Always so honored to get to spend this time with you. In fact, I look forward to bringing you conversations every single day that hopefully inspire you in your faith walk, that deepen your understanding of God's Word, and that heightens your awareness of His very real presence in your life. Well, I have a question for you. For some, it just may be a rhetorical, but others, I really want an answer if you've got it. When was the last time you had a fresh encounter with God? If you've got a story to tell, I want you to share it with me. When was the last time you had a fresh encounter with God? Maybe it was something as simple as you are rushing to the store, you get out to the parking lot after you get your groceries, and you look up, and the sunset takes your breath away. And you're reminded once again that the God who put the stars in place knows your name. Something like that. Or maybe he downloaded a truth that set you free. When was the last time you had an encounter with God? And even how would you describe your relationship with them now? This is one of those shows that I'd love some interaction. Why don't you text me your thoughts? 877-933-2484. We've got a really powerful conversation up ahead. My friend Lisa Whittle joins me today to talk about her new release, I Want God, How to Love Him with Your Whole Heart and Revive Your Soul. This is the book. This is the stuff revivals are made of because it goes right to the heart of all of the things we pursue so we don't have to feel our desperate need for God. And if you listen often enough, you know on the show, this is the no-fluff zone. We're going after it with the things of God. And I'm always asking, what are you trying so hard not to feel? Because when you can answer that question, you can invite God in to heal that place and revive your soul. So I'm praying today for you would be the beginning of a personal revival that would unleash a corporate revival. Got a couple of quick announcements before we hear from Lisa. First of all, if you happen to be walking through kind of a dry, lonely season, we want you to know we're here for you. In fact, my colleague, our morning show host, Carmen LaBerge, recorded 15 short audio messages. We would love to send your way via text. You can just uh, text the word LONELY to receive two to three texts a week for the next several weeks. Text the word LONELY to 877-933-2484. And grow in your faith as you study God's Word with a free reading plan from Faith Radio. We have easy-to-follow plans with additional resources like downloadable study guides and podcast interviews. It's all available now on the Reading the Bible Together resource page at MyFaithRadio.com. All right, let me tell you about my guest. We'll get her on the show. Lisa Whittle is a popular author, speaker, sought-after Bible teacher. She's the founder of Ministry Strong and the popular Jesus Over Everything podcast, as well as the co-founder of Called Creatives. She desires Soul Deep Revival and wants to see people pursue Jesus for life as they grow deep roots of faith. Her latest book that we're talking about today is I Want God. This is uh, going to be a powerful conversation. I know it already. Lisa and her family live in North Carolina. We're honored to have her back on the show. Lisa, welcome back to the program. Oh, it's so good to be here with one of my favorites, Susie. Thank you. Mm, Yeah, appreciate you so much. You know this because you've been on the show plenty of times. We ask the same question every day, just the first question, because it matters so much because it speaks of our fresh walk with God. So what has he been talking to you about in these times, these days, as you sit with him? Well, I do. I love this question. I've, I've actually been in the book of Isaiah for a while. And um, one of the things that I was reading, I think it was yesterday, that that really compelled me, Susie, was... Uh, this idea of how God is ready, able, and present for those who want him and don't want him. And something that really stuck out to me was uh, in Isaiah 64 and 65. And in in 64, he says this, "For, for since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him, which speaks to those remnant, the ones that are patiently waiting on God. And I think that's a portion of us. But then he also, uh, in chapter 65, says this, I am being found by people who were not looking for me. To them, I have said, I am here. And I don't know, something about that just compelled me. I thought, you know, there've been so many times in my life where I feel like I have been patiently waiting on God. Maybe I've been doing better in my spiritual life. And then there have been times in my life 
that I feel like I have not been looking for the Lord, and yet there He is. Uh, He's still been present. And so I felt like, isn't that kind of the groups of people representative of who we are on the, on the scale. Sometimes even that's us on both ends of the spectrum. Boy, that's beautiful. Thank you. That's why I asked this question. What a, what a great question. Well, there's a story to this book that we're talking about today, and some of it's your own story to tell. Some of it, you it is for public consumption. So as much as you feel led, share us uh, with us the story about I Want God. Well, I wrote this book, Susie, as you know, because I think the very first conversation we ever had was when I released it for the first time. This is actually a re-release of this book. I wrote it over a decade ago when I was in my own place of feeling quite desperate. I I was feeling like I wanted a lot of things in my life. I wanted to be accepted by people. I wanted um, to be popular in my career. I, I wanted to uh, f- keep my family safe and sort of put us all in this bubble, whatever that is. I wanted to control my world. I wanted to be blessed by God like I thought he was blessing everyone else. I, I wanted all of these things, and I felt very consumed by that, all of these things that were consuming me. And so I began to just uh, feel this angst every day of my life, like I'm desperately wanting more. And so I just began to 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 feel overwhelmed by that. And I came face to face with the reality that I didn't actually want all of those things. What I really wanted was to be free from wanting those things. Mm -hmm. And so through a series of events, the Lord just sort of took me to my knees and said, you know, come away with me and seek me, pursue me, because I've tried so many things in my life, Susie. And the one thing that I've realized through the years is the only way that I've ever gotten better is to really pursue God more. And he was the only way that could clear away the the, the fog and the, and the angst and all of that. And so I went into this place. I remember walking into the um, bathroom after my kids had gone off to school. My kids were a lot younger then. And I walked into the bathroom and I was wearing a Snuggie. You remember when the Snuggies were popular? Mm, I was wearing this Snuggie and I looked a mess and uh, I looked into the mirror and instead of seeing a woman in her Snuggie that looked a mess, of course I did see that, but I also sort of saw this picture of a preacher walking into a white tent getting ready to preach a revival. And it didn't make any sense to me. I mean, I'm a Baptist girl. I don't kind of see these these pictures. And and so, but I did. And I remember walking into my office and saying, Lord, I don't know what to make of this, but I I, I see that there's this some kind of revival piece here. And the Lord said, Your soul needs revival. And I remember going to my computer, Susie, and I remember typing in the word to Google revival. And I, I I saw some things pop up. And one of the things that I saw pop up was the Welsh revival of the early 1900s. And I began to read just ravenously things about the Welsh revival and how over 100,000 people were saved and bars and brothels were shut down and how God moved in that revival. And I thought to myself, this is what I want in my soul. And the Lord spoke to me and said, the same Holy Spirit that moved in those revivals lives inside of you, Lisa. I can revive your dead soul. And I got on the carpet fiber of my office floor and said, God, you can have every single part of me do what you will. And God changed my life. Hmm. You know, Dr. Rob Reamer is a regular guest on our show, and he says, um, you can have as much of God as you want, but not more than you're willing to pay the price for. In fact, you have Hmm. What you were you have what you were willing to pay the price for. In other words, the distance you were willing to go. And that other piece of that conversation is so rarely talked about, but you write about it really in detail, that there is a cost. You know, sometimes we water down the gospel to mean something it doesn't, but there is a cost. When you trust Jesus, uh, he goes after things in your life, and it's not comfortable, and it's unsettling, but the trade-off is always so worth it. But I think, Lisa, that is why people love to stay in the shallows, because They don't know the God who loves and saves and delivers and disrupts. But when you get to know him, you trust, you realize your whole life's in better hands when they're in his hands. So I'd love for you to speak to that because I do think I've heard this. I'm sure you've heard it as a public person. When I've watched what you've gone through, it makes me not want to walk very closely with God. 
because of how much you suffered. Well, then I said, well, I'm not communicating clearly enough then of how amazingly good he is because he's redeemed all of it. So I'd love for you to speak to that. You know, I think that is a fear of all of ours, right? Or a lot of ours, at least. We think, well, man, I don't, I don't want to go through what I've watched other people walk through. And one of the things I talk about in I Want God that that is so um, true, and yet I, I will admit, Susie, that it doesn't it doesn't come off the fingertips easily, is that living with living wanting God is not a risk. Living without wanting God is a risk. Mm -hmm. And I think that what we feel is that life itself is a risk. And so somehow, if we hold back from living our full passion for the Lord, that we will be immune from the attacks of Satan or, you know, um, the ways that, that we otherwise would be at risk. And the reality is, is it's not true. Uh, and, you know, we know, according to John 16, 33, in this world, there will be trouble. We we know that verse. Of course, the second part, take heart, I've overcome the world. But I think there's some place inside of us that thinks if I stay under Satan's radar, perhaps I won't be you know, it's like the, it's like it's like being in school, right? If if we if we don't get the teacher's attention, they won't call on us. It's that kind of a, a philosophy. But the reality is, is we live in a world of trouble, and trouble will come. The point is that as we pursue Christ and as we become consumed with the things and the love and the passion and all of that of our Lord. We are able in a different way to live in this world of trouble. And that's really the point. You're never going to be immune. I don't care where your passion is on the scale. But as you fall in love with the Lord and as he consumes you, the things of the earth do grow strangely dim and your perspective changes. I'm telling you, wanting God changes everything. It changes the way that you make decisions. It changes the way it changes the way that you pursue things in life. It changes the way you live. It changes the way you die. That's the why. That's why, Susie, I believe in, in part, I don't know the mind of God, but that's why I believe that he asked the question in John 1 to the two disciples that followed him, what do you want? Because he knew that would determine absolutely every turn of their life. A recent guest was talking about um, a different topic, um, about our sexual story and how God redeems it. But she made this point that sort of jumped out at me when we were talking about, you keep hearing about in the public, you know, Christian leaders who fall. And she said, you know, there, it, it's a vast subject, but she said, one thing she said is oftentimes, you know, you get kind of a hit from status, from popularity, like you do from drugs or alcohol or shopping or anything else. And we do that. To, to satiate something because mm. we're not dealing with something in our soul. And I've just been thinking about that, Lisa, because, again, the question I ask often on the show is, what are you tr trying so hard not to feel? And you think about any time that you're going to things and they're in replacement of God because you don't want to feel the thing that keeps surfacing in your life, you are reinforcing your captivity. And for uh, people, whether you're public or not, if you are getting a buzz off of your success at your job, I'm not to say there's nothing, you know, God wants you to prosper in your work. And there's really a wonderful feeling of going, you know, God did that through me and you offer it back to him. But that's so different than the buzz that costs you and costs everybody around you. And that makes us vulnerable. And I would love for you just to say a word about that because it was a gutsy prayer for you to say the honest truth about me is I want this, I want this, I want this, and I want this. But Lord, I want you more. What did that transformation look like? Because that's a scary prayer to pray. It is, but I'm so glad we're talking about this. And you know, you know what's been so interesting for me, Susie, is you know, having written something over a decade ago, and what the Lord downloaded to me back then about this concept. As as this has been re released, He's shown me even a deeper layer of it, which I didn't even fully understand at the time. But isn't the Holy Spirit good to continue to teach us even in this concept? Because, you know, I was talking to a couple of leaders the other day, and I asked them the question, "What do you want?" 
Neither one of them could answer the question. But this is why this is such a crucial conversation. And I'm glad you brought it up in the context even of Christian leadership, because I firmly believe it's one of the reasons why we keep having some of these, these massive things happen in our in our in our Christian world because we're not having a core conversation we need to be having, which is desire. Because God put within us this desire piece. And it, of course, it is the desire to desire him. <laughs> but what has happened is the church really hasn't talked about this conversation because what we've talked about more is this idea of need. And there is an important place where we say we, we, we need to acknowledge our need for God because that shows vulnerability and, and, and weakness. And of course, we know from scripture in our weakness, he is strong, all of that. We need to, to acknowledge that. But it is not just need. Because if we do not talk about desire, what I've seen happen is two things. We either express it in a way of liberalism, which is very different than liberty, which is freedom through Christ, or we suppress it in a way of of legalism, which usually then goes back to number, it ends up at number one, which is why we've seen a lot of Christians just completely losing their convictions. And so this is so important. We need to address what are we desiring? And not in a way of, of, of this, this shame that we carry with it, but to say, where am I off mission? Because in the original translation in John 1, that question, what do you want? It's what it The question was, what seek ye? And Matthew 6, says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So if we are off mission, if we are desiring something else, Susie, we've got to take a look at it and say, why don't I desire God? And that is an important question that we need to ask. So good. We're going to pause here, and I'm going to read a few of the texts when we come on back from the break, but I want to ask another question, just an honest confession time. If you were face-to-face with Jesus, and he asked you, what do you want? What would be your honest reply? Not your spiritual reply, not the ought to or should do reply, but truly the gut level honest reply. Because as Lisa said, that will give so much information to the Lord and to you. Because, you know, God gives us to certain desires and then others get perverted because we are looking to them as a source and not as a gift. Jesus is the source of life. So as we unpack what we really, really want, um, maybe that conversation, that revelation will lead us to the Lord and a greater encounter with Him. Talking to Lisa Whittle today, her book, I Want God, How to Love Him with Your Whole Heart and Revive Your Soul. I've got a few copies to give away. You can text the word book to 877-933-2484. We'll be back in a minute. Hi, I'm Susie Larson, host of Susie Larson Live. You know, following Jesus is not just something we do. It's who we are. We follow him because he's the savior of the world. He lived, he died, he rose again and blew the doors off of the devil's claim on us. That's why we can live free and we can share with others the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right now, it's our spring fundraising season, and we would love for you to join the Faith Radio family. Tell others about how God has changed your life. Be an ambassador for Christ as you share the good news. And then, if you feel so led, would you join the Giving Family now? You can do so by clicking on the link in the show notes or simply give safe and secure online at myfaithradio.com. Thanks so much for tuning in to Susie Larson Live. We are having a heart-to-heart, deep conversation with my friend Lisa Whittle. She's an author, speaker, and a minister of the gospel. Her book is titled, I Want God, How to Love Him with Your Whole Heart and Revive Your Soul. And she writes like she speaks. And we're talking about personal revival, which starts with honest conversations before God. So at the open of the show, I asked if you've had an encounter with God, if you'd share it. Going to break, I asked if you were face-to-face with Jesus, and he asked you, what do you want? What would you say? So I'm going to read some of these texts, Lisa, that have come in. I'll have you comment. This dear soul says, I was dealing with long COVID and was really down. I started praying Psalm 51 every day. One day it finally sunk in. 
what restore to me the joy of my salvation meant. I remembered what a dark place I'd been in before I met Jesus and how he swept that darkness away. I was filled with such joy, and I realized how much he loves me. That's beautiful. Mm. Stacy says, back-to-back sunsets last week that were absolutely breathtaking. I was reminded that when I open my, the eyes God gave me and I see, he will bless me with the riches from his hands. I got to say that again because it's so good. Back-to-back sunsets last week were breathtaking. I was reminded that when I open the eyes God gave me and I see, he will bless me with the riches from his hands. Now to the answers to what would you tell Jesus if he said, what do you want? Kathy says, I would ask God to do a great work of righteousness in my family and to help all of us love and follow him. Andrew says, how do I believe and to know the difference between what you do for me and what Satan does? Sherry says, I would tell him I want joy, real joy, overflowing joy. Natalie says, peace and healing from past wounds, acceptance of myself, freedom from my own condemning thoughts. And uh, Kathy says, I want love to be a magnet. I want my son and my family to know the love of Christ. Really great answers, friends. Thank you. Any thoughts on any of these, Lisa? Mm. Well, Psalm 51 is one of my my very favorite chapters in all of the Bible. I think, you know, when we've been to a place of, you know, desperation where David had been, I think we can relate to saying, God, clean me out from the in clean me from the inside out. And we we know the difference and what it's what it's like to live in a place of of great need and 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 also great want. Um I, I think the things that, that people are saying here are are are, are familiar. You know, joy, yeah. right? Clarity of mind and and what we want for our families, all of those things, Susie, are are things that God wants for us too. And I just know that in my own life that all of the things that I could name, if I could make a list and say, here's what I want, I want this, I want that, I want this, that though sometimes they felt, um, it felt like it was an intangible when I say, well, well, as I pray and as I desire God and as I, I get on my knees and, and as God begins to fill me, um, these things do come. Sometimes that felt far, but I, I do know that that is ultimately the answer, that God is the one who fills and gives and sustains for the long haul because, you know, we can we can and have often tried to read all the books and do all the things and follow all the rules and do all of that. But at the end of the day, it is God who we know brings the joy and brings the clarity and brings the the union and all of that. And so um, I think it's really great to ask a question like that because that's where it starts. And often it starts with this simple prayer of God I don't want you right now in the way that I should, but I want to want you. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's a really powerful start. What a great place to start. This dear one says, why do I struggle to spend time with him? I want to spend time with him, but why do I do what I want to do first? I love that honest question so much. (laughs) I wish I could hug you, friend. Yeah. And uh, this one says, I would tell Jesus, I want for my marriage to be healed. I just want to hug you too. Like you You know, these, go ahead, go ahead. I was thinking about, you know, that for that first comment and I I relate, you know, I, I, I say this in the book, but I have loved Jesus since I was six years old and I have also loved me. And sometimes I have loved me more. And this has been the rub of my life. And I've also wanted God to to, you know, clean me up and deconstruct me and make me, you know, more streamlined and and more beautiful according to what the word of God says makes me beautiful. And sometimes I've been terrified that he will. And I think that's, isn't that the rub of life? Isn't that human nature? Isn't that us wanting life both ways? And that's what I wrestle with, even in the pages of I Want God. I'm very honest about that. And I think it's important for us as believers to be honest and I love that your show gives a safe space for that, even in comments here, because Susie, that is where we come to God and say, I am terrified, even as I pray for these things that I really desire in life. But God, you know me anyway. 
And that's that's important to be in that place of honesty. Hmm. Yeah, confession is a powerful, powerful thing. Telling the truth uh, before others and God. Jamie Winship, who's another regular on our show, always says, when confession happens, he says the kingdom of God starts to come. And uh, he used to work in law enforcement, and he said, confession isn't, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's like, when we would arrest a perpetrator, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We couldn't do anything with that. I mean, good, you're sorry. But confession is, first I robbed the bank. Then I knocked that person over on the bike. They're confessing, this is what I did. He said, when you're able to stop running and start confessing, that's when the kingdom of God comes because God is so is irresistibly drawn to the truth mm. about your story. And uh, it's, con- it's confession, yeah. it's repentance. You know, repentance is a massive part of, it's a massive piece of revival. You know, we, we, we say, oh, we want God to come and and we need God to come. Both of those things, when want and need match, I mean, that's that's the revival piece. So we say we need God. We want God to come and bring revival. And part of that, a major part of that is going to be this repentance piece. It's a confession and repentance to the Lord. And the repentance piece is turning back, turning away from what we've done and turning back talks about that in Revelation 2, turn back to me again. And then it says, and do what you did as, did at first, talking to the Ephesians church there. He's saying, do those things that you did at first to draw you to me. And so that's a very important part of revival. Hmm. You've got these daily fasts. I love these. I did these in my uh, Prepare Him room as well, because fasting from food is great, but I think there's other things you can fast from that really engage your faith and engage your heart because we have a propensity to disengage and go on autopilot. So I'm going to read a few of these. Have you comment? I'll read a few more because I think they're so good. I've got a break coming up here in just a couple of minutes, but here's a few. I will prayerfully resist from casting any judgment today. Today Mm. I will seek not to settle for comfort by doing something that stretches me. Today I will seek to not settle for comfort by doing something that stretches me. I love that. I will fast from isolation today and reach out to a friend. I choose to fast from control and will surrender my day to God. Anything you want to say about those? Mm. Well, they all convict me. You know, these are all things that I've struggled with myself. It's why they're in the book. I think one of the biggest issues for us is comfort. I think comfort is one of those things that we think is our very best friend because we love it so much. You know, our, our culture is driven toward comfort. It's we, we get the most comfortable shoes we can. We have the most comfortable pillows we can possibly get. I love comfort myself. But the reality is comfort presents as a best friend, but it actually robs the life out from under us because it keeps us from things that really, we really, really want at the core. Uh, It keeps us from a vibrant relationship with God in the end, who really is the one who brings us the true comfort, the lasting comfort. It keeps us from our our core gift and mission for the kingdom of God. Uh, And it keeps us from things like reconciliation, things that are very, very important for our own soul and for unity in the body of Christ. Oh, so good. We're going to pause here talking to Lisa Whittle and a few of these uh, that have come in. When I've asked if you were face to face with Jesus and he asked you, what do you want? What would you say? We've had some great texts. If you want to answer that question, I'd love to see uh, what you have to say. 877-933-2484. This dear one says she wants to know that Jesus still loves her, even though he's allowed a third cancer diagnosis. And so as we go to break, Father, I pray for this dear one, that you would bring healing to her body, strength to her soul. God, that you'd um, address the trauma of being that sick, God, and, and restore her in ways she never thought possible. Father, would you take what the enemy has meant for evil? And Lord God, would you turn it for good? I pray that you give her a hope and a future that she can declare, I will not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Lord, your word says, by your wounds, by your stripes, we are healed. May she be healed miraculously in Jesus' name. We'll be back in a moment. having a really great day. Thanks for tuning in to Susie Larson Live, talking to my friend Lisa Whittle today about her new release, I Want God, How to Love Him with Your Whole Heart and Revive Your Soul. Lisa writes this, because of Jesus, we are not too far gone. There are things we want more than God that keep us from wanting Him most, things that consume us. We need to identify them, pray, and get rid of them. 
Those life-changing steps aren't easy, but they're not impossible. They'll restore us to God, and he will do a miraculous work within. And friends, remember when Rob Reamer is on, he's every month, and he has said a couple of times, we can have as much of God as we want, but not more than we're willing to pay the price for. And he said, you know, where we're going in these days and what God wants to do uh, is not sufficient on a devotional diet, that somehow, mm. some way, we need to linger longer with him. We need to carve out space. We need to say no to binge watching this or that and not being legalistic, but just saying, I'm creating space to sit with God, to hear from him. And Lisa, in your book, you've got 40 daily fasts. And I just want to read a few more before we dig into other parts of the content, because we could do a whole show on these. They're so good. Um, Here's another one. Today, I will set aside denial and embrace what's real. We've been talking a lot about that. I will take a break from people pleasing today by telling someone no. So that's fasting from the fear of man. Today, I'll fast from avoidance and tackle a challenge head on. I will say no to fear today and ask God for boldness. I choose to fast from being stuck and stagnant today. Anything you want to say about those? You know, I was thinking about that fear piece. I think sometimes we think, you know, we're just going to be miraculously healed from fear for the rest of our lives. And we're never, ever going to have a feeling of fear. We're never, ever going to deal with that ever again. And, you know, I, 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 perhaps someone has had that happen, but what I have more experienced in my life and seen in the lives of others, because we are human, we have those feelings that keep coming up. And so fasting from fear, it would be, you know, saying, I, I, I acknowledge that this fear is present in me. I acknowledge that I'm human and I am frail and, but without the help of the Lord, I will give in to my fears. I will be overcome by my fears. But because I am an overcomer through Christ, um, I know that fear will not overtake me. It doesn't have to overtake me. And so fasting from fear um, is is acknowledging the fear and acknowledging that that is a, a, a feeling that exists and in this fallen world and saying, I'm going to say no to that today. I'm going to reject that today. And I'm going to get help from the Lord where my help comes from. And boy, I mean, if we would practice that more often, Susie, I think that could be so powerful. And what progress we would make with fear in our life. Hmm. Amen. I've had a number of guests say in the last few months, Lisa, they don't believe you're ever fully delivered from fear until we see Mm -hmm. Jesus. That you, you know, there's times where you can be in bondage to fear and captive, and God can deliver you. I love Psalm 34. I pray it all the time. He delivered me from all my fears, but I'm contending that will be my story. Um, But there's still, that's the enemy's best weapon. And if you let your guard down, you know, he's had your whole life to steady you. You can know that he will use fear again because it's effective. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yep. All right. I love that. That's right. Okay. I will, today I'll lay down depletion and be filled afresh. These are fast, daily fasts from Lisa Whittle's book, I Want God. I'll fast from striving today and rest in God's enoughness. I choose to surrender shame today in favor of God's grace. Here's a good one. Today I'll give up certainty and accept the unknowable. Say more if you would. Mm, I think certainty, wanting to know is, boy, that is a... um an almost universal feeling in this world today, isn't it? Because I think things feel completely out of control and perhaps are in some ways, although don't ever doubt that the Lord is in control. Uh, He has the world in his hands. And so I think for us, because we are so bent on 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 knowing and so many things we can know there's you know we live in the internet age we can we can just quickly type in something and get information and so we want to know we want to know what's going to happen we want to know you know what's going to happen in with our kids with with the world with with ourselves with with our health all of the things and I, i know that the lord's tender to that and yet god is the one who knows and so i think um, well, I think it would be powerful if we took a day and we said, Lord, today, I'm not going to demand to know something from you. I'm simply going to rest in the wow. fact that you know, and I'm going to fast from that today. And what might happen if that changed? Uh, I think that would be interesting to take a day to fast from wanting to know. 
Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm kind of, well, I'm way into health and wholeness. Fitness was in my background for over a decade and uh, having battled health wise, I, the joke is I'm not a doctor, but I play one on radio. <laughs> so we have, <laughs> oh, I have friends like you. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, you don't get me going. I mean, but I, we have a functional med doc, one of my doctors on the show every month. And I, I, I'm, I don't know, God's given me a capacity for it. But one of the things we say a lot is every step towards healing, every step towards health matters, every step. So when I look at these nuanced changes, like you said, Mm. if you even, what if you did that for a week? Lord, I'm not going to demand to know things that are not knowable to me right now. I'm going to learn to rest in your mystery. That opens it up to to revival. On the flip side, don't you think, Lisa, our demands and our offenses that he isn't jumping through our hoops and giving us what we want are what literally block us from revival? Oh, 100%. Because, you know, if only the fact that we have set ourselves up with an entitlement piece, there's somewhere in that, Susie, that says, I'm entitled to know. I'm entitled to know. Mm. I deserve to know. Uh, God owes me this information. Now, we won't say that out loud. That doesn't sound very spiritual, does it? But that's actually what we're saying. And we're also saying, I don't trust. There's somewhere in there that says, I don't trust. I don't, I don't trust that God fully has this. I don't trust that God can can fully take care of this. And, you know, that things aren't going to work out in exactly the way I want them to. You either believe that God loves you and God has you, or you don't. And I know as humans that that's really hard. I mean, I live in this real world too, and there's so many things I want to control right this very minute and know right this very minute. But at the end of the day, isn't what we really want to have more of God within of our in our spirit so that we can rest no matter what happens? Because the reality is if you live very long, you realize I, I don't actually control anything. And so what I I've realized what I really want is for God to fill me and consume me to the point where whatever happens in this world, I know I'll be okay. I know that I will have a different perspective because I know that God is consuming my life. Hmm. Love this so much. People are texting going, so good. Needed to hear this today. So, so good. I'm so grateful you're listening today. In fact, I got to read you a text from Bill. I love Bill already. He says, yes, this is me. How wonderful. An awesome early birthday. His birthday's March 6th. I accidentally discovered Faith Radio two days ago. God does nothing accidentally. God bless you and your people. Well, Bill, we love having you. Welcome to the family. Appreciate you so much. Okay, just reading through... uh, In Lisa Whittle's book, I Want God, she's got in the front of the book, 40 daily fasts. And I mean to tell you, you could take one of these a week and walk them out. I bet they would change your life. Um, Here's another one. I choose to surrender shame today in favor of God's grace. I will fast from striving today and rest in God's enoughness. God brought me through a whole season years and years ago saying, I don't want you lifting a finger to manage other people's opinions of you. I don't even Mm -hmm. want you to help Mm -hmm. people if you're doing it to look good. And you know how much restraint that took? And it showed me my heart and what a striver I was. That takes a lot of faith (laughs) because people will judge you for it. But God is after something so much deeper. All right. I will fast from a Be Better strategy today and rest in a confidence and faith. I choose to set aside the pursuit of wealth today instead to be overwhelmed by gratitude for God's blessing. Today, I release my grasp on logic and I embrace mystery. I will step out of heaviness today and abide in lightness. And I'm going to give you one more. I will choose to fast from turmoil today, knowing that God is a God of peace. There's so many, but these are a few. Anything you want to add? Mm. Striving is is a big piece, I do think. And I think I'm thinking of it even in the context of striving when it comes to God, because I feel like that even in this idea of wanting God, there's somebody listening that thinks I am... I need to present myself. I need to come with my best clothes and my best you know, my best spiritual clothes. I need to come all ready for God or I'm not good enough. And that striving piece so often gets in the way of this revival that God wants to do inside your soul. Uh, I want you to, 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 to fast from that because I really truly believe that that God wants you to come to him. I know he does. I mean, think about scripture, about 
how we're to come to him and and coming with the, with the faith of a child and 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 it, it's the heart that he's after and that's who God can work with and so I think of striving in context of striving when it comes to the Lord. Hmm. Boy, so good. I can't help myself, Lisa. I got to read a few more because they're so good. How about this one? I'll say no to ashes and yes to beauty. What about that mm. one? I think we look at our lives and all we see sometimes are ashes. Yeah. You know, we see the ashes of a broken marriage. We see ashes of, you know, our health. We see ashes of a financial ruin. And let's be clear there are a lot of ashes of our lives. We, You know, nobody knows the full extent of what all of us have been through, no matter what we look like, no matter what our, what our, you know, level of work is or anything like that. Only God knows the true ashes of our lives. But there's something about recognizing the beauty. I mean, even the power of you reading to us, someone talking about the sunset, there's something about gratitude. There's something about seeing the beauty of God and believing what God can do that changes us. It changes us. And I preach to myself because I'm not one who's overly positive in life. I, that's just not my bend. And so I think there's something really beautiful about that. Hmm. Karen just texted in and said, hasn't tuned in for a while and so glad she did today. No more striving. Hashtag no more striving. Rebecca <laughs> Ponce here talking to Lisa Whittle today, author of many books, and she's got a podcast, Jesus Over Everything. We're drawing from her book, I Want God, How to Love Him with Your Whole Heart and Revive Your Soul. Great conversation up ahead. Don't go away. We'll be back in a minute. This is Suzy Larson, host of Suzy Larson Live. I don't know about you, but I love consistent nourishment. I love to fast on occasion. There's a purpose in that. But if you go too long without eating on a regular basis because you're too busy, your body actually goes into crisis mode. Well, in the same way, your soul, your spirit, they need nourishment too. And that's why it's so important to be listening to scripture, listening to good teaching on a consistent basis throughout the day. That's why we're here. We love what we do and we want to do it with you. If you listen on our on the radio and the terrestrial signal, we encourage you download our free faith radio app. That way, if you're traveling this season, You can take us with you wherever you go. You can catch the live shows or even the podcast after the fact. And we've made it easier than ever. All you have to do is text the word app to 877-933-2484 and then click the link. I hope you will walk with us on this journey. Greater things are yet to be done in and all around us because God, well, he's on the move. Thanks so much for tuning in to Suzy Larson Live, talking to my friend Lisa Whittle today, drawing from her new release, I Want God, How to Love Him with Your Whole Heart and Revive Your Soul. And a friend texted in and said, I feel like revival is starting at our church and revival is starting in me. I just told our pastor on Sunday, I keep getting a picture of water, just the water coming in. I say, I have this picture of the water coming in up to my ankles because people are lingering longer at the altar and worship. It's, there's been times at the end of the service where the worship team is up there and he'll say the altar teams are, you know, are up there and open if you need somebody to pray for you. And most of the church doesn't leave, and worship goes on for another 20 minutes, and people are just lingering, and there's just a hunger and a thirst. And I, I'm seeing it everywhere, Lisa, and I think if you just look at the news, they're not reporting this. So somehow, some way, you've got to bend your ear to heaven and find out what God's doing, because He is moving in these days, isn't He? Yes, He is. And I mean, you saying this, I have full body chills, and I agree with you, Susie. It is so exciting because there are just there is there's a hunger there's a hunger because there's a desperation yeah. and this is when god begins to move i mean listen god has always been here he has always been ready he has always been present he is our ever present help in trouble we've always been in trouble we've just been numb to it we've been asleep to it there's we've always needed god yeah. And it's not the need. That's the point. We've always needed God, Susie, but we have not always wanted God. 
And we are beginning to want God. We're beginning to have the need match the want. And we're beginning to say, I thirst for you. I hunger for you. I can have nothing else but you. No one else will do. None of this other stuff I've tried. We have wandered. We've been looking. We've been searching. We've been in a desert. We've tried this nonsense over here and that nonsense over there, and none of it's worked. And we're finally saying, oh God, I am hungry for you. And we're finally seeing movement. Thank you. And it is exciting. And I'm telling you, God is on the move. And what he can do, we don't even know. Hmm. Our minds are too small to contain it. But what he could bring to this world, the revival that he could bring to our homes, the ways that he could put us back together, the ways that he could change our lives, the ways that he could change our churches, the the neighborhoods, it, it, it is just beyond our ability to understand, Susie. And so I just beg anyone listening to just get on your knees with God and say, God, I want you, or God, I don't even want you in the way that I want to want you, but I'm here. And I just know that that kind of heart is a heart that can move heaven. And uh, revival's near. Revival's near. Somebody got to text me an amen. Somebody got to text me an amen. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm riled up in my office over here. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. All right. I got an amen from my producer. So she's first. Where are the rest of you? Amen. Amen. That's exactly, exactly right. And, I, you know, there's a passage in scripture and the message paraphrase says something. <laughs> Angie, my producer, says, I'm yelling in Studio One. Nobody knows, but she's yelling. Something so. fell off my yes. desk. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Revival's breaking out right here, right now, people. That's I'm right, just telling you. Right. But there's a passage in scripture in the message paraphrase. It's something like, we feed away on junk food. Meanwhile, our souls go hungry. So we just a mm. couple minutes left. I want to circle back. Okay, the amens are coming in now. Um, I want to circle back because it goes back to the want. And then I ask again, what are you trying so hard not to feel? And I dare you to ask God without any condemnation or judgment, because there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, but dare to ask God, what are, are my coping mechanisms costing me? Mm-hmm. What are my defaults Ooh. that I'm going to that are keeping me from the knowledge of the true desperation of my heart? Because I want to feel it because you've got to feel it to heal it. I want to yes. feel that longing, that need, because that's the need you want to meet. But as you said, we're sleeping and we're stuffed full of comforts that are really malnourishing us. So anything you want to add there? Mm. Well, you get Susie and I together. This is what happens. Goodness exactly. gracious. We could just go on and on, couldn't we? You, you've you nailed it, Susie. It's the cost. What does it cost you? And that's the thing. It has cost you. Oh, it has cost you. You know, I, I often think about this idea. Someone asked me the other day, they said, you know, what? how do we really feel it? How do we really sense it? This idea of wanting God and all of this. You know, if you think about it, you're hungry for this steak dinner. You, you've you thought all day about wanting to go get the steak dinner, and yet you go into your your kitchen and you see a bag of Cheeto puffs. Now, don't faint, Susie. I know this isn't very nutritiously good. That's the point. <laughs> you go in and you see a bag of Cheeto puffs and you think, I might have a handful. I'm hungry. But let's, so let me just have a handful of these Cheeto puffs. And by the time you eat a handful, you've you've satisfied your hunger to a small degree in the moment it feels like you're not as hungry for that steak dinner anymore but you actually still are you really are it just is kind of fooling you in the moment to think that you're not really hungry what for what you're hungry for for what you wanted in the beginning and also these cheeto puffs are a cheap substitute for this amazing steak that you could have mm-hmm. but that's what we're doing all the time every single day we're settling for comfort But in the end, we're still asking the question, why does God use everybody else? Friend, because we're still sitting on the couch asking that question, why does God use everybody else? Because we're comfortable on the couch. And yet God has put breath within our body and he wants to use our life. But comfort keeps saying, I'm the best friend you've ever had. Just sit right here on the couch. And listen, I preach to the choir because I've lived this. I know but that comfort idol gets in the way. And at a certain point, it's it's things like that. It's also the approval of man over and over again. We want to be approved of, but it's never good enough because there's always going to be someone else that's got to approve of us. 
And so we have to keep feeding, 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 feeding. But what we really want in the end is that long-term approval that only God can give us truly. No man will ever be able to give that to us. And so I just want people to not settle for the cheap substitutes anymore. And that's really what it's what it's about. What does it cost you? Because I think if you sit with that question for a minute, you'll realize how oh, the cheap substitutes have cost me. Yeah. And the Lord wants something so much more for you. So I'm just wondering if you would take the challenge, friend, in the next 24 hours, give God some time and space and say, Father, would you show me? Knowing he speaks with no condemnation, no judgment, no shaming. So if you get that voice, that's the enemy. But Lord, yeah. would you show me what my coping mechanisms have cost me? And would you show me a better way? Because I want to want you more than anything else. Lisa, I love you. I love you. We sharpen each other. Uh, I appreciate yes. you so much. And uh, thank you for the good work you do. And we pray God's richest blessings upon you. I love you too, Susie. This has just mm-hmm. felt like a revival to me. So thanks for having me on. Yeah. It's everywhere, friends. It's everywhere. Where there's hunger, God's going to move. Lisa Whittle's my guest. Her book, I Want God. We've got a handful of copies to give away. I said she writes like she speaks, so you will experience a revival as you're reading, and you'll be cut to the heart in the best way, because it's time for that. It's time for that. Have a blessed day, and we'll meet you back here next time. Thank you for listening to this conversation from Suzy Larson Live. These conversations are available because of your support. You can become a supporter now at MyFaithRadio.com. Please subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any episodes and then share it with friends so together we can all have a deeper life in Christ.